going on guys we're back out here tonight we got a rush project going on let's get after it Okay, so here's what we got. I got a little hand sketch here from a customer that runs a drilling rig. He's got a pin that he needs ASAP. He did bring us some cold rolled round stock. I don't really know what grade it is, so we'll see how it turns on the lathe, but it's a pretty simple part. We aren't gonna have to turn it down at all. He says he threw a caliper on it and it is inch and a quarter. So the length on it's three and three quarter. And then there's a bolt hole there on the right side. We've got a couple grease grooves in the middle and then a grease zerk on the left side right there. So we will have to drill a center hole for the grease to run through. We'll drill a hole where these grease channels are so that it pumps grease out those channels. Then that should do it. So we're gonna get after this one, see if we can't get it done for the customer and get it back to him. Let's do it. Okay, so I just got an eight inch piece cut here and we'll probably end up parting it off after we get it machined. But I like to leave enough that I can make sure I machine the whole thing and then we worry about the last cut at the end. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we got the shaft all polished. We faced it off. I did mark where my bolt center is going to go. That's going to be a 3 8 hole. We'll get that drilled probably last. So now I got to figure out where my grease grooves are going to go. We'll have one right in the dead center. Okay, so I'm just going to use one of these little button inserts to put the grooves in. I'm going to slow the lathe down. We want them about a quarter of the depth of the button insert. Those are pretty big grease grooves, but the customer wanted them to be able to hold quite a bit of grease because he's had issues with this pin drying out on him. I think it was probably the design of the pin. I didn't get to see the original pin because he's still in the process of pulling it out. So I think this is going to work good for him because the way it's going to work is there's going to be a hole going down the center and then we'll drill a hole that connects each one of these grease grooves. And so when he pumps grease in there, it's going to come out these grooves 
and spread throughout the whole pin. So I think it's going to work good. We're going to chamfer this and then we'll be ready to cut this off. I'll probably throw it in the bandsaw, cut it off and then bring it over and face it off and chamfer it. That's about it for the grease grooves. So now I'm going to I'm going to throw my square insert in here and go ahead and chamfer this. Okay, I'm going to take it over the saw, cut it off, we'll bring it back over, we'll be ready to drill our center hole, and then we got four holes to drill on the mill. Okay, we got about 80 thou we got to take off this, so we'll take 80 thou off and chamfer it. Okay, so we're good on our length. We're gonna chamfer it. Okay, so we're gonna throw our center drill in here. There's no set size on what we want our hole to be, but I don't usually like going bigger than an eighth for a grease channel. We're gonna be awful close getting that drilled all the way. We're gonna use an eighth inch bit. One of the tricky parts about drilling with a bit this size is you got to clear your chips a lot more so it doesn't bind up in there and snap the bit off. Alright, so I got a grease zerk here. And this is one that he gave me that he wanted me to put in. Okay, so our top size is quarter 28. We're gonna go ahead and drill this out. If you don't have a bottoming tap, you're gonna wanna drill your hole a little bit deeper so that you can get the threads cut. I don't have a bottoming tap right now, so I'm just going to drill my hole a little deeper and we should be fine. When I put my tap in the chuck, I just want to lightly grab it. I don't want to crank it down because I want it to slip if it grabs. We don't want to be breaking a tap off in here at this point. Oil it up good. I'm going to stop it here in just a second, but I want to get it started. Okay, you can see it grabbed. So that's perfect. That's all we want there. So now we're started and we're perfectly in line. So now we'll finish it by hand. Money. Feels good. It's cutting good. Feel pretty good about that. We'll back it out, blow it out with the air. Threads look really good. Okay, so that's that's good there. We got our hole tapped. So now all that's left to do is go over to the mill and drill our cross holes in our grooves and drill our bolt hole. So we're gonna put a number two center drill in the chuck here. And I think we're just gonna stick with an eighth inch grease channel. Okay, we're centered there. So now we'll switch over to our bit. 
Now the tricky part about doing this is usually when you hit the intersection, the bit will usually snap off, which is less than ideal. We're gonna see what happens. We're just gonna try to go real slow, keep it oiled up. Usually it does that when you're machining something hard like 1044 or something like that. So we're gonna see how this goes. I don't know what grade of steel this is, but it seems like it's fairly soft. I think it's just regular cold rolled steel. Okay, so now we're drilling through the other side. Okay, so our hole, you can see it's dead center here and dead center here. So I can see down in there that it is intersected with this hole. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now what I think I'm going to do is rotate it 90 degrees and have the other two coming out this way to try to get equal distribution or I guess it wouldn't be equal but it would be different distribution. Instead of having them all come out here I'm going to have the other two going this way. It's time for today's super cool tool. All right guys, so for today's super cool tool, we're gonna to be talking centering head. This is a tool that's very common for fabricators. So this tool has a little V-groove on the bottom and it's got magnets on it. So it'll stick to a piece of round shaft or round rod, anything cylindrical that you're working on that's where this tool might come in handy. Or pipe, I've used this numerous, numerous times on pipe, welding pipe, fitting pipe. In the center here, there is a center punch that slides in and out. All the way around the outside of this, there is markings from zero to 360 degrees, and this level spins. So there's an arrow at the top, and you can mark whatever angle you want. Let's say I've got a piece of pipe, and I need to put a weld a let on a 45 degree angle. I set my dial to 45 degrees, snap that to the pipe, level it up, hit that with a hammer, and then it will leave a center pop right there where you need to cut the hole for your weld a let. There are a lot of ways that I've used this tool. And it's not just with fitting pipe. I use it with machining sometimes too. If you wanna put a line at top dead center of a shaft, you can stick it on either end, smack it, get your center pop on either end, and then you can actually draw a line from center pop to center pop, and that gives you a perfect line at the top dead center of whatever you're working on that's round, pipe, shaft, you know, round rod, anything like that. Price tag on these, they're not real expensive. This one I bought on Amazon. This one here is made by spotterlevels.com, and I wanna say it was $25. It's all machined aluminum. The center punch pin is steel, but everything else is machined aluminum. It's got a very smooth level on the center. There are two other brands that I've seen that are pretty reputable brands. Curvo Mark makes one, and I want to say it's around $50. And then Flange Wizard also makes, they actually make a whole set, and there's three different sizes. And Flange Wizard makes great tools, I've, I've mentioned that before. So there are some good options out there. Those are the brands that I know of that are, that are good tools that I have used myself and I would recommend to you guys. So that's your centering head. That is a super handy tool. If you're in fabrication and you work on any sort of pipe or round rod or a shaft or anything like that, I would get you a centering head. So check them out. This is definitely another tool you want in your arsenal. It's a super cool tool. Let's get back to the project.
Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little teeny quarter inch countersink bit in our drill, and we're just gonna hit these holes, just, just kiss them and knock the burr off the corner. Okay, so I can show you here the finished look that it gives it. Not to mention it just cleans it up, gets all the burrs off. So we got our bolt hole there. It's tapped for our grease zerk. That's, that's our pin right there. All done. So I think it turned out pretty good. It's just a little part, but it is fairly complicated. So we were a couple hours into this one. Okay, so there's some other stuff I want to mention about this project. This project kind of has a long story, so I'm going to try to make it short. But I have a friend who has tried to refer me to this guy numerous times when he's needed work done on his drilling rig. According to his words, the first time he came by the shop, he walked in and he was kind of taken back by the cleanliness and the amount of equipment I have. And his exact words were, well, if I would have known, I probably would have come to you sooner, but I just assumed you were some schmuck with a grinder. So I'm glad he doesn't think at this point that I'm just a schmuck with a grinder. So he came over, he brought me the material. He had me machine the pin. I machined the pin for him. He showed up the next morning to pick it up, had me check it with the bushing, which he didn't give me before. He just told me the dimensions. The pin was a quarter inch too small. At that point, he asked me, well, how much would you charge me to machine a second one? I said, well, it's going to be the same price. So I ended up machining another one for him. I had a piece of round stock on hand, so I machined another one for him. So the one I put in the video is actually the first one I machined for him. The second pin was identical, and I'll throw a picture of that up here with the bushing. After I got the pins machined for him, he actually called me up the following day. The pulley that this pin runs through, he was trying to braze the bushing on it and was having a heck of a time because he was trying to braze it on site. And so he called me up, asked if he could bring it down and see if I could braze it on there. So I did end up TIG brazing his bushing into the pulley. I'll throw a picture of that up so you guys can see it. That turned out pretty good. After that, once we got the pin done, the bushing brazed in, he was able to put that back together. And then the following day, he called me one more time and he had broken some sort of a coupling that he uses to pull the drill pipe. And I'll throw a picture of that up as well. He had snapped the hook on the end off and I had to take and heat up and bend a new one and weld it onto the coupling. So my point in all this is a lot of times with a small business like this, I'm sure because I'm a smaller business, he honestly thought I was just a schmuck with a grinder. I do believe that a lot of times People who are in business for themselves, but they're on a smaller scale, they may be a small business, but they care just as much, if not more, than a lot of these big companies. One thing I really try to teach my boys and one thing I try to show in my work is that I take pride in my work and I want the customer to be happy and I wanna do a good job. There were a lot of lessons on this project. One of the cool things about this project was the customer was impressed by my tools and my skill and ability to the point where he came back three more times over the course of the next, you know, four or five days. I've never really done a whole lot of advertisement. The most advertisement I've ever done is this right here, sweatshirts and hats. I've never really done any billboards or anything like that. I don't have a website yet. So it's basically just word of mouth. It's amazing to me how when you do a good job and people are impressed with your work, it really spreads like wildfire. If this customer's happy with my work, he talks to a lot of people, 
He'll probably tell some of his buddies. You never know how it's going to end up, but in most cases, word of mouth is huge in business. I always really enjoy being able to do a job for somebody and they're really happy and impressed with the work because I know that they're going to go tell people positive things and it's just going to turn into more work. Anyway, I just wanted you guys to know I've had some good feedback from you guys about wanting to know more about the business side of things and so I just wanted to throw this in there. I'm just hopeful that you guys can learn from it just like I am. I just wanted to share that with you guys. So we appreciate you guys watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. See you on the next one. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do here is we got our just little, we just got our little teeny countersink bit in our drill hill, in our drill hill, in our drill here. So I got the, <clears throat> so I got the pins machined for him. Then, after I got the machines pinned, 